Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Legacy Farm, the podcast. I'm your host, Jace Young, and today's topic of discussion is this, the great transition of every business owner. Now, a lot of you listening to this podcast, you are either entrepreneurs or business owners just like I am. You are trying to build something that you can be successful in and ultimately pass on to the next generation, or at least that's what the game plan is. Now, the thing is, though, is I want to talk about the process and the journey that we go through as entrepreneurs here. And really just the reason I want to share this is because to provide you with some context or some level of awareness to see where you're at in the journey. And ultimately, hopefully it has some impact on you and it changes your viewpoint of where you're at and ultimately your direction and your decisions going forward as well. Now, when I first jumped into being an entrepreneur and leaving the banking industry back in August of 2016, I was doing it for a lot of reasons, but the reality is, is when anybody jumps into a business of their own and they really take on all this risk and everything, what is the number one thing you think they're focused on getting first? If you said money, you would be correct. Every person I know, every entrepreneur I know, other business owners, anybody I know that is is in this world, the very first focus that you have is money because the reality is you can't be drowning and try to build a business that impacts your industry in a very big way. And this was a, my exact experience from 2016 to really 2019, which 2019 is when I launched Legacy Farmer, I struggled, right? We did not know if we were gonna be able to pay mortgages. Like it, it was just a disaster, guys. And I don't regret that time. I don't you know, look at that time in any negative way because I had to go through that in order to feel real pain right and to really challenge myself over and over again on like hey what was i really committed to doing right and I, I look back at that time and it was like really the ultimate test of god that he was putting in my life to figure out like okay jace are you really committed to doing this you say you want to and you've taken some action here but do you really want this because even after you take the action the initial one anyways which was for me leaving the banking industry just that decision alone took me two years to make once i took that jump though God started to open doors, but then past every door though, there was a new challenge, right? There was a new challenge either in from a business sense or from a personal sense as well. And a lot of my early years here being an entrepreneur, there was just a lot of personal development, guys. There was a lot of transformations I had to make internally and really reconditioning my mind and my beliefs to believe in this new future that I actually wanted to create for my family and ultimately, you know, my life long term. And the reality is, is if you grew up in small town America, you grew up with a certain set of beliefs and really this identity to where you had a ceiling, right? You, your world was limited. And that's what I used to think as well. So those first few years there, there was a lot of internal work that had to happen for me. And I, I see this happen over and over again with literally every single business owner and entrepreneur I've ever faced, every customer that's coming to Legacy from over the years, there's always a certain level of personal development that needs to happen in every stage of growth that you hit in business, every new revenue target, for example, the person you are, let's say you're doing a million dollars a year in revenue right now, the person you are right now that's able to accomplish that, that person is not going to be the same one that can do $10 million a year in revenue. You are going to have to transform your internal beliefs and dialogue and stories and things like that in order to become that person that builds a business that does 10 million bucks a year. Now, again, I kind of went off on a side tangent there, but the reality is again, going back, we are all focused on the one thing that we need in the beginning, which is money, right? And the reality is like, you can't focus on long-term vision or what you really want to accomplish with your business if you are drowning financially. And I, again, I experienced that firsthand. I don't regret having to go through it because it just, it forced me to change, but that's just where our focus is. Now, the reason I talk about this is because for some of us, again, if you grew up in small town America, your relationship or viewpoint of money may not be at a place where it's actually serving you. And what I mean by that is that you actually may feel guilty for making money. You may feel guilty for desiring more, for desiring wealth and riches and abundance, for example. That's a real thing in this world. And, and those of you that are going through it or have been through it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There is a level of guilt that happens. So for example, one story that I had to battle for a long time is I watched my dad work, you know, my entire childhood, and he was building our feed yard from age five to age 45 when it went under for him. And so I sit here and I question, you know, based on his level of income today. And I, I sit here and ask myself, you know, my dad sacrificed 40 years to build something and to be able to have something to take over one day and ended up with nothing. Why am I worthy of having a bigger life than he does, right? Or earning more money or having more wealth or having more freedom or abundance or whatever it may be there. Those are some internal things that I had to deal with. And that's what I'm talking about. We all have these stories or backgrounds that we came from that ultimately shape our beliefs today and our identity today. And some of those things here, we have to collide with in order to really challenge them and find out what's the truth. And the truth is going to have to be something that's going to serve you. And sometimes what serves you 
may be hard to overcome, right? May be hard to battle internally because you have to let go of some of those old beliefs and old stories and start doing what's best for you. But what's best for you may not always be, you know, what, the story that you're telling yourself right now, right? And those things that were built into you over your childhood. So those are some of the things you have to focus on. But again, that relationship with money, depending on where you came from, you may feel guilty about wanting to make a lot of money and things in your life. And the thing is, I'm already gonna tell you that that is 100% false. Every single one of us in this world is worthy of wealth, riches, abundance, and things like that. Not everything is negative about money, even though the media and movies and everything like that, we are conditioned growing up to think that money is the root of all evil. And I'm just here to tell you that it's not. And the reality is, is once you can get to the point to where like, you know, your first few years of building your business, once you get to the point to where you are established and you have some stability when it comes to your finances, it allows you to transform as a business owner. Because now once your family is taken care of, once your team's taken care of or things like that, you have that stability, it gives you the mental capacity to release all the financial scarcity that you've been living with for years, some of you for decades, to actually focus on, okay, what's the bigger picture here, right? And those are the things, that's what I had to go through. And it wasn't just, you know, up to the point of starting Legacy Farmer, it was even through the first two, three years of starting Legacy Farmer, I was still establishing that level of financial stability that I needed personally for my family and ultimately my team as well so that I could turn my mental focus into, okay, what's the big problem that we're solving here? What resources do we need to impact the industry in a big way? And once you reach that point, it transforms you as a business owner. Everything changes for you. Yeah, it's gonna be a completely different world for you going forward. Now, the other thing that changes in that time though too, is that now you don't start looking at money as the thing that you're going after. You start looking at it as a tool. Okay, and the thing is, is once you realize it's a tool, you realize that there's an infinite amount of it in this world. You can make as much as you want, just provide more value, right? Or you wanna make more money, solve a bigger problem. Maybe your business doesn't solve enough of a big enough problem there. And uh, that's why you're not earning the income that you want to. But once you get to this point though, you start to look at money as a tool. Now, the benefit of this though is, and this is what I'm getting to in the podcast, is in the beginning, we're chasing money. When you go through this transition, and this transition can take, you know, two to three to four years, depending upon, you know, how much money you have coming in and stuff like that. But once you get to a certain level of financial wealth and stability, you start looking at money as the mechanism or tool that allows you to serve or complete your higher purpose, right? So everybody wants that, you know, the old saying is, you know, do something you love and you'll never work a day in your life. To me, that's that's positioning the job as your purpose. And I feel that, that that's false, right? I can't, I can't chase a job. A job is not going to give me the ultimate level of fulfillment that I want in my life. People like to say it, it sounds nice and stuff like that. And inside of Legacy Farmer, we do transformative work, right? I get to impact people's lives. God has blessed me with that and brought people into my life that I, I get to truly impact these people. But at the end of the day, it feels good in the moment, but that's not sustainable long-term. You have to have something bigger going forward that is going to allow you to serve just a much higher purpose, guys. And this is where I get into spirituality and your religion and really your connection with God, because I feel all of us have a purpose that maybe some of you haven't even seen yet or can't even comprehend, which I'm going to challenge myself with that too, because I may not even be able to comprehend the highest level of purpose that God has set for me in my journey, because I can't even think of it, right? It's so far out there and it's so much bigger than where I'm at right now. I may not even know it's there, but I'm going to challenge you with the same thing because we all go through this. And the thing is, again, in the beginning, you're searching for the money. As you get to this transition, you start looking at money as a tool that allows you to fulfill the higher purpose for your life. And that becomes the key thing that drives you. And every Everybody has to go through this transition. And I don't want you to feel guilty if you're in the first few years or you're still in the position where you gotta have the money. Focus on the money. Focus on becoming a master of your numbers and really building your business skills and knowledge and, and wisdom there so that you can get the money because once you release that stress, you're stepping into a whole new version of a business owner that is going to be able to lead and build either an operation or a business that impacts a, a large part of the industry. And ultimately that legacy that we all want to be able to leave behind and set up our kids for success. But ultimately you want to leave the legacy because you want to know that you had an impact on uh, people while God gave us this time here on earth. So my friends, that is a kind of a long drawn out episode there, I feel like, but it's, it's a really powerful one. You really have to start analyzing and looking at your relationship with money and where it's been and what things need to change there. Because at the end of the day, if you're in the position where you're chasing money right now, but deep down you have some just really well-rooted beliefs about 
money being a negative thing or money being the root of all evil. It doesn't matter how much money you want to make. God will not give you the opportunity to make that money until you release those energetic walls, honestly, that you've put up around you. And guys, I'm dead serious. I know it sounds a little bit out there, but until you change your mindset and how you think about money and how you think about wealth and what you see that money can do for you in your life, you're always going to be trapped in this energetic box that you put around you because deep down you think money is evil. And God knows that, which is why he's not going to bring it into your life like he could if you would just change your relationship with money. And that's going to take some work. That's going to take some time. And hopefully listen to this podcast is your first step in getting to where you want to be. So my friends, that concludes today's episode. Hope you found it valuable and we will catch you on the next one.